Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're coming to you today to teach physical science. Physical science um, will be every Wednesday at 11.30 um, for about 30 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes. Um, I'm Matthew Parkin, Mr. Parkin. Um, if you have your packets, I want you to go ahead and take your packets out. If you haven't received a packet yet, then no problem. Why don't you just take out a sheet of paper pencil and get ready to write these things down. Um, we're just going over the basic principles today of 1D motion. Um, so the standard that we're going to be talking about today is standard 7 and it's analyze and interpret one and two dimensional motion applying basic concepts of distance, displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. And then we're going to throw in some um, motion graphs in there as well. So today our game plan is to go over some key terminology, important formulas, um, that we're going to practice calculating speed and velocity, acceleration, and then we're going to try to set up a few graphs. Next week we're going to continue some of the key terms, um, talk about scientific models, um, how to use graphs as well, and then we're going to talk about 2D motion, then a quick review of everything. So again, if you do have your packet, if you'll go ahead and get that packet out, um, this is the chapter two stuff. This will help you for the minor grade and the major grade. Um, but if not, don't worry. You can just take out a sheet of paper and take a few notes and it'll help you. So our objective today is just to use basic one-dimensional motion principles to create motion graphs. And I wanna emphasize basic. It's what you need to help you get this standard and understand this packet and um, have a good concept of, of motion. So today, the key terms that I want you to go ahead and write down, I want you to go ahead and write down motion, position, speed, velocity, acceleration, independent variable, dependent variable, and slope. I'm just going to go ahead and give you a, a couple minutes to, to write those down, a um, couple moments to write those down. Make sure you, you might want to skip a space in between each key term. Um, just have in your head that we're not going to go in complete order. We're not going to go through all the definitions and then we're not going to go and um, do um, formulas and then practice and then grasp. We're going to try to follow a specific order, but we're going to be getting these definitions as we go. So go ahead and write all those down. All right, I hope I gave you enough time. If not, then I will make sure you have enough time to write these down when we come up to the definition. All right, so the first thing that we want to talk about is motion. I mean, what is motion? I mean, was I in motion then? Uh, obviously not, depending on where we are. However, we're on planet Earth. What's planet Earth always doing? I mean, if we be honest, if I stand like this, I'm actually moving at 67,000 miles per hour around the sun, right? Well, let's just be basic, all right? So, motion is when an object changes position. So, I'll be the object. Right now, I'm not in motion. I just changed position. So n that was me in motion. Um, position is a measurement of, local, uh, of location relative to an origin. Well, this is my origin. My motion is going this way. Well, what is my position? My position is two classroom tiles away from my origin. All right, so there's two things that you need to know about position. I'm going to use two words a lot when we're talking about position. Those two words, one of them is distance, distance, and the other is displacement. Now, if you want to go ahead and write those down, that'll be fine as well. Um, 
in the next slide, I'll kind of uh, tell you when we're going to use distance and when we're going to use displacement a little more. All right, speed. We use speed in everyday life. All right, we use the word speed. All right, what is the speed of our car? How fast can we ride a bike? What is the speed um, that we can run on the track? Well, speed is how quickly an object is moving. How quickly an object is moving. All right, the formula for speed, you, you need to go ahead and write this down. Speed equals distance over time. There's that word, distance, right here. Um, speed equals distance over time. You may want to write that. A lot of teachers like to use this little tool. Speed equals distance over time. Now what this does, if I want to calculate speed, all I have to do is cover up this S. That gives me what I need to do. Distance divided by time. Easy enough, right? If I want to find time, distance divided by speed. You see how distance is above the S and distance is above the time? That's how you know that you're dividing. So what if I want to find distance? I cover distance up. Well now, these are beside each other. So we're not going to be dividing, we're going to be multiplying. So distance equals speed times time. This is a quick way just to remember that. It's, let's say it's a shortcut. We don't have to know that. We can just use this and then we can solve algebraically if we want to. Um, we're going to be talking about two types of speed. Instantaneous and average. Now, most of the time in physics, physical science, we talk about average speed. Um, that's when you take a total distance that you go and divide it by the total time it takes you to get there. Now let's say we're driving in our car. When we look down at our speedometer, that's an instantaneous velocity. We can't say um, that you're going to start at the airport, drive all the way to the mall, and if, you, if your average speed is 45 miles per hour, you can't say that your instantaneous speed is going to be that the entire time, right? We're going to stop at red lights. Speed limit's going to go up and down. So instantaneous speed is your speed at that moment in time. Average speed is the total distance you go divided by the total time it takes you to get there, okay? Now velocity. Believe it or not, there is a difference in velocity and speed. Velocity is the measurement of speed with direction. So instead of using distance over time, you would use displacement. All right, so let me give you an example real quick. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles between me and the end of the table. All right, so if I walk one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, my total distance was seven tiles, and my total displacement is seven tiles to the right. All right, however, what if there's something in my way and I have to go all the way around this desk? It takes me 15 tiles to get there. My total distance would be 15 tiles, but my total displacement would still be seven tiles to the right over here. My left, your right. So either way, I would still end up right here. My distance was 15 tiles, but my displacement was seven tiles to the right. Now, using that word to the right or east is very important because velocity has direction. Our displacement has to have direction as well. Um, we're not going to get too much into that from now on. It's not super important, but you still need to know it, okay? And um, lastly for this slide, acceleration. 
So we all know when we're car shopping or we see car commercials, zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. That's acceleration. Acceleration is the rate in which speed changes or velocity changes. Notice it says velocity. Acceleration also has direction as well. We'll get into that more next week, but just know acceleration has direction as well. So speed, how quickly an object is moving. Velocity is the measure of the speed plus the direction. Then acceleration is the rate in which an object um, the rate in which an object changes velocity. So this is your acceleration formula. Acceleration equals the change in velocity over time. So we have acceleration A equals the change in velocity over time. Anytime you see this, this is delta, all right? Anytime you see this triangle or this delta, it means change in. We can also write this as acceleration equals your final velocity minus your initial velocity all over time. Um, change in velocity, so when I said that car went from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds, our change in velocity was 60 miles per hour, 60 being our final zero being our initial, 60 minus zero, 60. Then if you wanted to find the acceleration, divide 60 by 3.5. There you would have the acceleration of that car on the commercial that you're just dying to buy now, right? All right. A few more seconds to write this down if you need to. All right, now we're gonna practice working a few problems out, okay? So if you have a calculator, go ahead and grab that. If you don't have a calculator, we have these crazy awesome inventions that I like to call personally a cell phone. I mean, you know, some of you have them, some of you don't, but if you go on there, you have this a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful calculator app on there. So that's what I'm gonna be using, all right? So we have a, um, a problem here. It says, Marcus is on the track team. He can run 400 meters in 55 seconds. What is his average speed? So I always like to have my formula in front of me. So I can have speed equals distance over time, or I can have my little triangle Speed equals distance over time. All right, so the first thing you need to ask is, what am I looking for? Well, it says, what is the average speed? So we wanna know the total length that Marcus ran divided by the time it took him to run it. So speed, I cover up my S, I have distance divided by time. So we are at 400 meters divided by 55 seconds. Now I want you to notice I wrote my units. I didn't just put 400 divided by 55. I put 400 meters divided by 55 seconds. Now if you do that on your calculator, you get 7.27. .7. And I always say double check yourself because everyone makes mistakes. 400 divided by 55, 7.27 meters per second. Notice, do you see how meters is divided by seconds? Anytime you have meters divided by seconds, you can also write it as meters per second. This means the same thing as meters divided by seconds, okay? So make sure you keep your units because you can't just say the speed of, the, I, I can run 7.27. You can run 7.27 what? I mean, 
you can run 7.27 seconds because I ate too many donuts during quarantine? Ah, I don't know. All right, so let's make sure we keep those units. The next one is Lance Armstrong's teammate, George um, Hincapi, averaged a speed of 33.6 kilometers per hour. Notice kilometers per hour is our units. 33.6 kilometers per hour in the 15th stage of the Tour de France, which took him four hours. How far in kilometers did, the, did he travel in the race? Well, we wanna know how far he traveled. So that's a distance, correct? So we're gonna cover up our distance and we have speed times time. So our speed is 33.6 times four hours, 4.00. That is kilometers per hour and that is hours. So on our beautiful calculator here, we have 33.6 times four, and we get 134.4. 134.4. Now, 134.4 what? Are we talking about speed? Are we talking about time? Or are we talking about distance? We're talking about distance, so we're at kilometers. And if you didn't know how to do that, then you can always use your units. You can cancel everything out. If you have kilometers divided by hours, times hours, you can just cancel those out. I wasn't gonna show you that, but spur the moment I decided I needed to for you wouldn't be confused. Um, next, um, a high speed train travels at three kilometers per hour. How long would it take the train to travel 1500 kilometers at that speed? So for time's sake, I'm just going to tell you that we're looking for time so you cover up your time, you're gonna do a distance divided by the speed, 1500 divided by 300, that should be five. So it should take five hours to travel that distance. Um, we'll do an acceleration one, just so you can um, have the experience as well. A car accelerates from 12 meters um, per second to 25 meters per second in six seconds. So we know that acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity all over time. So our final velocity is 25 minus 12 all over 6.0. So um, 25 minus 12 is 13 meters per second over 6.0 seconds. All right, so in your calculator, if you notice, I didn't put my units up here because I'm simplifying, but before you do anything, always make sure your units are there. It's just safe. If you put your units there, then you won't forget to put them in your answer. 13 divided by six, and that's 2.16, or let's just say 2.2. And that's meters per seconds divided by seconds. So meters per second squared. All right, so I, I kinda wanna talk to you about how to set up graphs now. So let's not worry about any motion right now. Let's just go straight to, to graphs, okay? So when we wanna set up graphs, all we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a big coordinate plane. And the, the beautiful thing about physical science is we don't have to draw the math coordinate plane with four quadrants. We, we draw in quadrant one, we're just drawing an L, okay? Draw an L. Now, if you notice, I have this filled out for you for time's sake. The x-axis 
is always horizontal. Your independent variable is always going to go on your x-axis. Always. Your y-axis is your vertical. That's where your dependent variable goes. That's stuff like your speed, your acceleration, and your displacement. What I love about motion is that time will almost always be on the bottom. All right, time will almost always be on the bottom because an independent variable is a variable that doesn't change in the experiment. I don't know how many of you have gone and tried to build a time machine in your basement. It doesn't work. Time is time. It keeps moving forward whether we like it or not. So time will not be changed right here. Your dependent variable will be something like speed, um, displacement, acceleration, okay? Um, so let's, let's move on really quick. We want to try to, I want to I leave you hanging on a problem that I want you to try to do this week. Next week we're going to open it up with this problem and see how you did, okay? So, your problem is, Maddie and Rhett were bored during quarantine, right? We're all bored during quarantine. So they set up an experiment to test how fast they could ride a bicycle. They set up markers at 10 meter intervals from zero meters to 60 meters. So they set up a marker at zero meters, 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters, all the way to 60, okay? They then took turns riding and recorded times at each interval. So basically, they started at zero. They took off. If Rhett was riding the bike, Maddie would push a time at 10, push a time at 20, push a time at 30, and so on until the end. At the very end, they compiled a data table just to compare times. Rhett took five seconds to go 10 meters, 10 seconds to go 20, 20 to go 30, 25 to go 40, 30 to go 50, and 35 to go 60. But Maddie took 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, 25 seconds, and 30 seconds. So Maddie finished in 30 seconds and Rhett finished in 35 seconds. So go ahead and, and write this down. What I want you to do is set up a graph, and I want you to graph those two times, okay? I want you to graph those, um, those two experiments for Maddie and for Rhett. Next week, we're going to open up on this and see how you did. But also, we're going to go into 2D motion, and um, we're going to explore some things about 2D motion. So I hope you're all doing well. I'm so glad you joined me today. My name is Mr. Parkin, and I will be here every Wednesday at 1130 um, to help you do this packet. Hang in there, guys.